Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today we'll be discussing on Web Reconnaissance Framework. And the whole idea is, can we gather information about the victim machine or the enterprise or the organization that we're attacking on using a automated tool called Web Scarab? So what's going to happen is that we are able to gather a lot of information. And in fact, this is a really important phase of the of the whole cycle of trying to get unauthorized access into a system. So what's going to happen is that we're going to use a automated tool and try to gain as much information as we can. So sometimes as an attacker, as a computer hacker, you might not even have to actively try to gain exploit into the machine or into the servers. So what's happening is that you could actually be able to gather sensitive information so that it makes it helps you accelerate the process of gaining access into those systems. And these are really important steps for you to, to really understand and to know. So do take note during the demonstration. All right, so over here, I have Color Linux running. And we just got to enter Web Scarab. And we'll be able to launch the tool that will help us scan information, reconnaissance information over on the site that we are targeting. So moving over, the first step we can do is we can launch any particular say items like a ice weasel and what you're going to do is going to go to preferences and you're going to go to advanced it doesn't matter what web browser you're using but most importantly is that you have to configure how it is being connected to the internet so you go to settings and we're going to point it over to the proxy at 127.0.0.1 and of course at a part of 8008 and of course you click ok and you close this so that all the Items we're doing will be pointing over to our web scarab that will intercept all the connection and be able to help us gain information over onto the, to the target system that we're trying to, trying to go against. So when I hit enter on this, so web scarab is going to pick up the 192.168.1.11, which is a, another virtual machine that I'm running called Muti Lide. So it's a Metasploitable 2 machine and it has a couple of uh, web servers running that are vulnerable. So over here, you can see the IP address is 192.168.1.11. So moving back, of course, we, we realized that we were able to see the different kind of folders uh, from the root directory of 192.168.1.11. So of course, uh, moving forward, what we can do is actually, we can go over to the fetch tree. So this will actually help us list down all the directories uh, beyond multi -lide. So you just got to enter fetch tree. And it's going to start trying to get all the information within this particular folder. So over here, you can see that we have the, the number of pages that are running on PHP, the different documentation, all the index of PHP as well. So all these are the files that are directly below Mutilide. So this is the, the tree folder we got from this. And of course, we can go to login.php that we're going to take a look at. So go back to summary. And in the summary page, you're going to see all the information that you need. So we can double click on one of the, say, ID number two. And we double click on this. We are going to get the information of this, of the response coming from the, coming from the system. So over here, we can see the date. We can see the server type. And of course, we can enlarge it a little. So we can see the, the server type, the, what is it powered by, and some of the critical information that we can get. So, of course, with this information, of course, over here is this raw response. And, of course, we can close this information. And what's going to happen, we can use this as a fast template. So, you can click Use as Fast Template. So, this will load it into the fossil. So, if you were going to go to the fossil tab, and what you're going to see here is that we are going to use what are the information over here, then try to push some fuzzing information over. So, you can go to Sources. And of course, I have a, already created a SQL fuzz that will, it's a really short list trying to get information through SQL injection. So I'm going to enter this as SQL fuzz for the description. I'm going to click add. So when I double click on SQL fuzz, I'm going to see all the items within, within the file that we can be using to do some automated fuzzing attacks against this, against this PHP form. So we click close. And of course, we can click start to begin the fuzzing attack. So we can see that it has already been started. So we are trying to scan against this particular item that we have selected. So of course, uh, once you're done with this, you can actually get the results coming from, from it. So hang on a second. So it's going to be start, it's going to be scanning against the information over here. So moving forward, we can go to XSS as well. 
So all you got to do is add the parameter over here, click add, and this is the query. So what, what kind of queries do you want to put in? What is the name? What is the type of parameters that's going to be pushed over? And of course, the far source will be SQL fast. And once you're done with it, you can click start. And of course, we're going to get the returns from each of the, the attack that we have pushed against. So when you double click on it, you'll be able to get the information of what you were trying to do to gain, to gain information or accesses while doing the fuzzing over onto the, onto the target machine. So this is a, a great way for you to do automated web attacks against some of the web application servers, whether it is to secure or to hack into different web application servers. This is a great automated tool for you to, to accelerate the speed into gaining unauthorized access into a web server. So there you've seen it, how easy it was to actually spider through the entire site. And of course, we can gain a lot of sensitive information and confidential information. So one way to filter is actually to use SQL. So we can actually put a dot SQL on the file end name and we'll be able to find all the SQL files. And sometimes administrators might forgotten to remove certain sensitive information. So you could actually see the whole username and password list from those files. And sometimes even confidential information like PDF documents could have been left undeleted in the in the website and you'll be able to find those information, download them and be able to gain information, sensitive information before you even actively try to intrude into the system. So of course, we have also seen how we could actually do fuzzing attacks like dictionary attacks or password attacks over into the different input forms and be able to see if they are vulnerable to cross-site scripting, SQL injection, or even cross-site request forgery as well. So there are many, many ways of how we can actually automate the entire web application attack during this earlier phase of trying to gain unauthorized access. So of course, if you like what you have just watched, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below.